Hi, Ron from Clarity. This video will demonstrate a few of the pipelines from our Shopify to SageX3 integration solution. This client wanted an integration to automate their custom B2B sales orders and payments from their online Shopify storefront, as well as their physical orders, into their Sage X3 ERP for both shipping and picking up orders in the store. They also wanted to add some custom customer ID fields, bi-directional products and inventory sync, which we'll cover during the demo. As a modular architecture, once we develop a connector to the application, that allows us to integrate any application with that app. So we can integrate Shopify to any CRM, ERP, and supply chain, or integrate any storefront, omni-channel, or portal to Sage X3 using the connectors we're demoing here. So the first thing we're going to do is create a number of different orders in Shopify to see how we handle the different use cases. The first order will include creating the new user account as well as the order, adding in some items into the cart, processing the order, and finally, we'll mark the order as paid. To be clear, we're processing the orders exactly as this client's sales organization places their customer orders in Shopify. The second order will be similar, although there will be no user assigned, as in the user is in the store placing an order in person at the store at the point of sale checkout counter. The third order we create will be an anonymous order. This is used when the customers call up, place a phone order for pickup. The order is placed, sent to fulfillment, bagged, and set aside to be paid for at the time of pickup. And finally, order number four, this order will be created in place, marked as paid, and then we're gonna go in and refund the order, such as an in-person voided order or someone demanding a refund. This will be shown on the back end to show how we process and handle these differently. So over to Connect, we go into the Schedules tab and we'll click on the Run icon to kick off the order's pipeline. For most pipelines, if there's nested or potential looping process, developers will attach an Output Indicator node, which you can see here that gives us a real-time progress indication of the currently running pipeline. You can also click on the Details icon of the running process, which takes you into the log, pre-filtered to the running process, so you can watch the log as each node processes and posts data and move on to the next node in the pipeline in real time. Once we're at 100% progress and the status has changed to finish, we can go in and look at the updates that happen from the sync. So the first thing we're gonna do is start in Sage X3 and see if our orders made it, which we can see the orders, and if we drill into one, view all the line items, addresses, and see that everything else has been created. One thing that is controlled from the Sage side is the creation of the user ID. When it created that user account from the first order, it took the first three initials of the user's first name, J-A-N in this case, the first initial of the last name, C, and then it appends a number, which is incremented until it finds a unique number, in this case, 01. Finally, we can see that it also entered the payment ledger entry since the order was marked as paid. Now let's go into Shopify to see what happened with this bi-directional sync. So as these orders are sent and created in Sage, there is both data and information also being sent back to Shopify within the same pipeline. You can see here on the right are our four orders that we created above and that they've got different statuses. The first order tag that is applied is the synced order tag. Then if a payment was posted into Sage, it sets the tag synced payment and finally, when it's completed an order and moves on to the next order, it tags the final sync status. So you can see with the first two orders, they have all three tags. Remember order number three was the phone order where they were gonna pay at pickup? Well, we synced the order, and as there was no payment made when the order was placed, it didn't add the payment tag. And finally, remember that last order, which was voided and refunded. Since it was voided, there was no order or payment to sync into Sage, so it finished processing and didn't sync anything in Sage for that order as there was nothing to fulfill or track. So that covers the different orders pretty well. Let's move on to products and inventory. First, we'll start in Shopify by searching for a product ID F0033 and see that there are no results. If I clear that search, you can see that I got a lot of products in Shopify, just not that product. However, over to Sage, you can see on the screen here that we've created that product ID, F0033, and now we need it and a bunch of other catalog updates to be synced into Shopify. In fact, after we kick off the product's pipeline schedule, we'll talk about and verify what will actually be synced. 
If I remember, we have many products and in this ink alone, we're updating over 900 products and creating more than 10 new products. So the sync reads in all the information from Shopify in memory first so that it can compare everything that was pulled from Sage so that it only pulls, updates, and posts changes during the new process. This pipeline calls three different nested pipelines. The first pipeline is the parent pipeline that calls the nested pipelines. So quickly on the left, it finds and reads all the products from Sage, maps the fields to Shopify, runs a nested pipeline to validate and update the live inventory counts for all the products, calls another nested pipeline which creates all the variants of each product, does some other data delta manipulation and processing, and finally sends the products into Shopify. Before we go validate that it ran, we'll take a quick look at the product inventory nested pipeline, you can pause to review, and also the product variant creation pipeline. Going into the tasks, we can see that it's at 100%, yet it's still running, so we'll click on the details icon to go view the log and see what's happening in real time. We can see on this node here that we're going to create 14 new products and update 932 products within this sink. Since the product creation happens first, although it's not 100% completed, I'll bet if we go into Shopify and search for our F0033 product now, it'll be there, and sure enough, here it is. Drilling into the product, we can scroll down and see that it created the main product, which is the bottle, and it has 13 in stock at one location, as well as creating a case variant with one in stock at one location. Drilling in further, we can see that this stock is at the EHS location, as recorded in Sage and sent to us during the sync process, validating all three pipelines where it created the new product, updated the inventory counts, and created the product variant as well. So in summary, we created a new user and placed four unique types of orders in Shopify, emulating the different types of orders that will get placed at this client's establishment. We then synced those orders into Sage and verified that the orders, order details, and payments were recorded. We also verified that it created the new user account as well as syncing the orders. We then went back into Shopify to see the bi-directional updates to the order statuses that came back from Sage. We then created a bunch of new products and product updates in Sage X3 and synced those to Shopify. Finally, we went into Shopify that validated our new products were not only made, but that their variants, inventory counts, and warehouse locations were also populated. So that's a quick view of Clarity Connect Shopify to Sage X3 integration. Thanks for watching.